Welcome to Success for Toy Podcast, where we shine a light on the positive side of every journey. Our platform is dedicated to celebrating the success stories and unique experience of people from all walks of life, regardless of their fame or background. Whether you're a well-known figure or just starting out, the Success for Toy Podcast is here to share your story and inspire other listeners with your achievements and insights. Join us as we explore a diverse range of topics and uplift voices that deserve to be heard. Everyone has a story to tell and we're here to listen. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm back with another interview and today I will be interviewing Sam. Hey Sam, give the little give the people a little bit about yourself. All right. So hello, everyone. My name is Sam Mitchell, and I run a podcast called Autism Rocks and Rolls. It's about autism and how we cope with daily struggles that you may or may not understand. Through the podcast, it's grown so much. I've helped sponsors, speaking engagements. I've spoken in Oklahoma, Orlando three times, Canada twice, Stewart, Florida, and Washington, D.C., and I plan events in Indiana, which is where I'm from. I love it. So we're going to get into Sam business, but not get into Sam business. But you know what I'm saying? We're going to get into his business. You ready, Sam? By all means. Okay. What are the primary um, characteristics of high functioning autism? Uh, The primary characteristics are lots of repetitive behaviors. That's one. I definitely have some certain fixated interests. I would say another one is anxiety. I have lots of anxiety that comes with it. And I also overanalyze. I pretty much overthink everything. I can overthink why this mm-hmm. little guitar behind me, it's the decoration. But I'll overthink, why did the guitar fall off the wall? Your phone had froze up. Or your screen had froze up. Last thing we heard was why did the guitar fall off the wall? That was that was my example. What that's why I overanalyzed okay. everything. And that was the example I used. Okay. okay. How does high functioning autism different from other forms of autism um, spectrum disorder? Um, I think with Asperger's syndrome and maybe other formalities of autism. It's just, I think, more of alert and more of an understanding of how this crazy and sometimes discombobulated world operates. Mm -hmm. What are some common challenges you face by individual with high functioning autism in social situations? Um, Social situations is following along with the conversation. It's just staying on the topic. And that's why I've I've always been better with Mm -hmm. virtual conversations with via phone because I have time to process what they're saying versus in person. Kind of like this. I got to be quick on my feet. Yeah. Got you. Is that sometimes do it like be frustrating for you, though, because it's like if they don't know and it's like they rush in the conversation, do they get frustrating for you? It can get frustrating. Yeah, it it can get it can get very frustrating on my end. But I'm always afraid to say it because Mm then I'm wondering, are they going to run off? Are they going to take it as, oh, this is autism. He has that freak disease because that's what society pictures us as half the time. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. How can early diagnosis and intervention impact the development of children with high functioning autism? I would say with early intervention is key. That is the biggest part you're going to do to help them out a little more. I mean, sometimes one of our biggest autism advocates, Temple Grandin, there are people to this day that will not take their adult person with autism or their child with autism shopping. Now, I understand when they're three, you shouldn't take them shopping. We let them enjoy childhood. But when they hit middle of the road age, maybe eight or 10, it's time to show them how to shop. Yeah. 
And why do you feel that at eight years old versus, I understand, like you said, three years old. So why do you think it's best for eight, when they turn eight years old to start taking them out shopping so you guys can like get to know things and things like that? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, now I wouldn't leave them off and, you know, drop them on like, hey, here you go. Here's a cart, go to the corner, put it in the, put it in the cart, go have fun. No, I would definitely escort them like, all right, so here are the prices. What do you think we should get? Should we get these bananas that are $9.99? Yes. These bananas that are a little dollar less. And let's look at these price tags and the percentages. Got you. How does high functioning autism affect communication skills, both verbal and nonverbal? Oh, well, it affects the non-speaking side very much. I have a hard time with non-speaking communication. The I call it hidden movements or hidden curriculum as well. It's the eye rolls, the body language. Not good at that. I focus more on the words, but some are more picture thinking on the autism spectrum. But the verbal side, mm -hmm. it's just wanting to change the topic each moment because I'm so bored with the conversation going on right now. Not now, now. I'm not speaking. This mm -hmm. is fine. I'm talking about. No, I get what you're I'm saying. Speaking to someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I got what you were saying. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Keep up the dime. Look, 007 mags. We got Big Macs. Don't forget the cheese or we might have to push your shit back. All you heard was click clap before he got his shit snatched. He won't get no get back because he was never with that. Spit his whole crew up like a Kit Kat. Made his bitch throw the dick like a Tic Tac. I think I fucked the whole too good. I made the group chat and now she's trying to spin it like Ambro. Go get your bitch back. Perky got my dog itching. He need a bad scratcher. He asked me, do I love her? And I asked her, why does that matter? My dog tipping do say that nigga got a bad blast. That many piss on any nigga thinking they the shit. Get a brick, flip a brick. I ain't never been no bitch. We can shoot open hand. That was Key Blow to Dawn 007. Y'all can check him out anywhere you listen to your music. What role do special entrants and routines play in the lives of individuals with functioning autism? Oh, that plays a humongous interest. Whatever they like, they're going to like, and it's going to continue. Mine was professional wrestling. My mother thought I would grow out of it. I had not grown out of it. I still watch it to this day. Probably when I hang up, mm -hmm. I might. I'm going to watch Raw or SmackDown. Do you, do you at least try other things, though, to see if you like it? And then if you don't, like, that's I think that's with us, too. Like, we'll try something. If we like it, we stick to it. But do you ever get bored with it, though? Here and there, yeah. But And I will try some stuff new. I'm not one of those people who are so rigid and it's just like, nope. Not doing it, but there are some on the spectrum that will not do anything new. They like the routine, yeah. and to them, it's not boring. Because it's something they're used to. How can educational environments be adapted to better support students with high-functioning autism? 
research it, number one, and two, try to focus on what we're interested in at points in life. We, we don't have to do it every time. I get it. We had to learn math and English, but why not use one of my interests into a professional math problem? Figuring out the geometry of a wrestling ring seems kind of cool. Got you. What are some common misconceptions about high functioning autism and how can they be addressed? We can't do anything. And that should be addressed by looking at what I can do. Because I've been on more over 900 podcast appearances. And I still can do stuff. I take out the trash every day. I'm not bedridden. There's things I can do. I get up every day on my feet. That's something. Because it's like, do they treat you like you're handicapped, like you can't do things? And that's the whole point. Like you trying to show them like, I'm not handicapped. I know how to do things. So don't That's treat me like I'm special. Someday, That's what you very frustrating. Yeah. How can parents and caregivers support the emotional and mental health of individuals with high functioning autism? I think they can do it by understanding what's going on. And you get to know the person well too. Time will tell you how to handle this situation or manage the situation. Because each person on the autism spectrum is different. Mm -hmm. One will have sensory issues mm -hmm. to clothing. That would be me. Others will probably have a meltdown if they're in a big environment. And that caregiver knows, okay, we're not going to ever go to an expo or a fan convention. That's just not humanly possible. Unlike me, who can go to one, not try to make the person feel less relevant. It's just that's his limitation. Mm -hmm. Mine's the wet clothes. Can't handle them for nothing. It's raining right now. And I've been, when I've been out, I've been sticking on the porches that has a roof over it. Dang. So what would you, what advice would you give someone, say um, a caregiver, she's taking care of a child that has autism and he loves going to the park but she tried to find other things around the house to, I guess, entertain him, what I'm trying to say. But he have a meltdown and act out because she won't take him to the park. How would you tell her to handle him? Okay, well, was it because she didn't want to, like, was it because she wanted to try something new or it was because of certain circumstances? Because I think at a point we do get circumstances, it rains and it's very frustrating. I've been there and it was hard for me to manage, but I did at a point when I got older. But what my parents did for me was they did social stories. An incident with this was I was going to originally go to a fall fun ordeals like where you can do corn mazes, hay rides. Well, that day it rained on me and Mother Nature wasn't too kind to me and I had a complete meltdown. We did a plan B. It was an arcade center. And also, but during the meltdown, I was told a social story. I love that. So tell the people how to find you. Tell them about your podcast. Get them all the information you would like them to know about you. All right. So you can find me on autismrocksandrolls.com. This podcast has 18.9K downloads. I've had some phenomenal guests from America's Got Talent, American Idol. I've also had professional wrestlers. So if you like professional wrestling, that's a great place to start. I've had Mick Foley, Buff Bagwell, Kane on. And I'm trying to think of who else I've had on. I've had a drummer on from Finger Eleven, former drummer for Finger Eleven. I've had just some great people with, with inspiring stories. It's all a great mix. You could take something from my podcast and the people that are on it. It's always fun to do it. And how could the people book you if they want to book you to be a guest on a podcast? Oh, if you want me to be a guest, just drop me a contact at info at autismrocksandrolls.com. I'm not hard to find. Okay. 
My contact information is also on the website, autismrocksandrolls.com. I love that. I want to say thank you for choosing Successful Toy Podcast to come on and talk to me about autism. And thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Sam, don't go nowhere. Stay backstage. The rest of you guys, I will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Successful Toy Podcast. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on YouTube, Fanbase, Cool People Network, and Twitch. You can also watch us on Facebook Live. If you prefer to listen, find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, Listening Notes, Samsung Podcast, Podcast Index, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. See you in the next episode. Bye.